For who is used to, uh, to see traditional uh, uh, formula of the equation of vapor transpiration, obviously uh, previous equations, uh, pre previous solutions seem by far too much complicated. But as I told uh, to someone of you before, uh, uh, in using, for instance, payment, it's not, not being clear that you are preserving energy. You are not usually controlling, controlling temperature and, uh, and uh, humidity. But if you measure temperature and humidity, I am just saying that you can use uh, the whole set of equation to constrain the values that you, that you got. And uh, instead of resorting to uh, simplified formulas. The other fact is that uh, I am preserving energy. So meaning, if I have a one term wrong, I should put the, the energy in the other term. For instance, typically, this term is the, the term that describes temperature. If I get a vapor transpiration wrong, the effect is the temperature is going up, of the surface is going up abnormally. So if I have a, temp a, a leaf temperature or a surface temperature that goes one, 100 degrees, I am understanding that I am not doing things properly. In some cases, I have, can have high temperatures. But temperature is one of the things we measure more precisely in, in, in all this, this stuff. So we can, uh, one message is also that you can use uh, this kind of uh, congruent view of the thing to do better measurements, for instance, or to drive policies of measurements or try to get integrated systems to, to have more clear results. <coughs> By itself, the measure of uh, evapotranspiration is very unprecise. Uh, one anecdotal thing is that uh, we had a paper uh, with the, the other model, which is actually doing evaporation in a more complicated way than this one that I am showing to you today. And uh, we had a discrepancy between uh, the hour forecast and the, uh, the what they measure with the, um, with the stations, with the, um, the, the anemometer the Doppler anemometer. I say, okay, okay may, I say maybe the model has something wrong in uh, when we have maximum, maximum radiation coming in. After that, we, but just after that we pointed out this error, the guy who is doing uh, measurement with the sonic anemometer say, okay, in this point we know we have 50% of error. In, in our estimation. So we were very inside the, the things. And because, uh, you know, people that measure the stuff uh, sometimes, I don't say they, they cheat, but they are not always clear on the, on the precision of the measure they do. So these are our solutions with all of these complicated things. Usually, maybe you see this one in this way. You have well, the first term depends on the, the radiation, and the second term depends on the, what is called evaporative demand. In principle, here, the solution shows that you can have evapotranspiration even if you don't have a radiation. Zero budget in the radiation. Because you just have evaporative demand from the atmosphere. Uh, the usual form of that maybe you are more used to see on the Pema motif is this one, where the sum of the coefficients were treated differently. We introduced some RG, which is a soil or vegetation resistance. And so this is an, an, an alternative form of this one, where also CE and the CE are, uh, and the C and the CE are uh, changing into their uh, reversal, which is the uh, resistance instead of conductance, and the A and B are set to one here. 
A and B set to one. But uh, another simplification of this is uh, uh, the famous FAO uh, um, formulas, which is uh, particularly suited for crops. You have coefficient for crop. Actually, there are some crop coefficient in front of in this small c. But uh, about the crop coefficient in the small c, Concetta will tell you this afternoon because in, the, in our system we have also the FAO formula. But even here, uh, another, another uh, misunderstanding in the Pema Montit formula is that uh, uh, at which scale you have to use. Well, you got to simplify it like this or like this. Obviously, the parameters are dependent on the type of data you put in input. So usually here you put daily radiation. But the derivation I did is just, I just simplified the, the, the equations, but I am solving in essential, essentially equations in continuous time. So they are valid for instantaneous radiation. And what I can tell you that when you may do radiation the right way, and uh, which is not so trivial at all. And you put the data inside, you see that also actually this formula was better than it used to be. So here in the FAO formulas, you have uh, the, the parameter uh, simply put on some tables for different crops, and you can have an idea of what is going on uh, on, that, on that type of crop. If you go outside uh, uh, what uh, this uh, simplification was, it, it was uh, designed for, you can have huge errors on this. There is a further simplification which is pretty popular, also from, uh, uh, among my guys, which is to use the so-called Prisley Taylor. Prisley Taylor is a paper, the paper by Prisley Taylor is in 1978. I did a side here. In the Prisley Taylor, essentially you say, you, you take all the evaporative uh, demand, time depending on the evaporative demand, you put B equal to one, and then further you assume, uh, you assume that this uh, evaporative demand is proportional to the radiation term. According to the coefficient alpha minus one, this alpha is called Taylor coefficient. And so the equation simplify and further simplify with this one. And uh, this is the Prisley Taylor. This alpha coefficient in literature I was said to be 1.26 on average. But if you look at, for instance, I'm a Stephanie Camp paper that did the review uh, 10 years ago about this topic. Uh, you say that alpha can vary from 0 0.6 to 2.4, which means four times, which is less than infinity, much less than infinity, but it's quite a, a large answer time. But we use often the Taylor formula. Another thing that maybe I have to mention before finishing this part is uh, the so-called potential evapotranspiration. What the hell is potential evapotranspiration? Potential evapotranspiration has a clear definition in terms of resistances here. We can see also in the data formulas if you want. Uh, poten uh, but potential transpiration is here when that, uh, that Rg is equal to zero. This is the only solid definition of potential evapotranspiration. This is the evapor uh, evaporation that happens when there is no resistance from soil from leaves for introducing evapor evapor evaporation. So the soil is well irrigated, or the leaves are uh, full in their power, full of uh, full of power of, of evaporation. 
some kind people, what they do, they say potential evapotranspiration, that is a, it's a paper, is when you take the electricity Taylor formula and the alpha is 1.26. We can adopt that definition as an average, but that is a reference evapotranspiration, it's not potential evapotranspiration. From the measure, measurement point of view, measuring potential uh, evapotranspiration is a nightmare. Because measuring, measuring potential evapotranspiration means that uh, uh, you, you have the inputs. All these inputs during the day are varying. Radiation is varying minute by minute, second by second, for instance. And so all the budget follows. In some times, also, you, Let's say the amount of water you have in a place is not varying so fast as radiation. Radiation is probably the thing that is varying faster, but this variation minute by minute. So potential evapotranspiration here is variating minute by minute. How can you measure it? You can. So potential evapotranspiration many times is a useless concept. And this is used in literature because it is useful to put in a paper. Let's say that I put potential evapotranspiration here so nobody is arguing. But in reality, it's not so, uh, so dense concept. And so I think we, for this, for simplification, we can stop here.